Hi, welcome back. In this video, we're going to review a little bit. We're going to focus on strictly parallelograms, that is, a parallelogram, rectangle, rhombus, and squares. And our goal here in this review is to recap what we've covered in this entire unit of parallelograms and quadrilaterals. But more importantly, what is the distinction between a square and a rectangle? If a, rect if a square can be a rectangle? What is the distinction between a square and a rhombus if a square can be a rhombus? And what separates a rectangle from a parallelogram or a rhombus from a, a parallelogram and so forth? So we're going to prove the different properties for each parallelogram. Like how do we justify that this shape is what we think it is? So let's get to it. Let's start here with a parallelogram. Visually, I can see that this is a parallelogram for several reasons. First of all, parallelograms, opposite sides are parallel and congruent. And I can show that. I can prove that using slope. I can show that the rise over run here is 2 over 1, 2, 3. The slope is 2 thirds. So if the opposite side is up 1, 2, one, two, three, if the other side is also two-thirds, I know that the slopes are the same. So these two lines are parallel. I can also show down here that horizontally we are moving three units, and then over here we're moving also three units. And those two are also going to be parallel. I can prove that the lengths of the opposite sides are congruent. I just did here. This is three units. This is their units. I can use the distance formula to find this distance and this distance. There are several ways to prove that this is a parallelogram. One thing that I can also do is identify that the diagonals bisect each other. So like, let's say, if I know the diagonals bisect each other, let me clear this up a little bit, that means that the diagonals constructed are going to intersect at the same midpoint. So I have a diagonal here from A to D. And I have a diagonal from B to C. The property that says the diagonals bisect each other for all parallelograms, it means that it cuts the diagonal into two equal parts. And the other diagonal will also be cut into two equal parts, implying that this is the midpoint of both lines separately. So if I can prove that that is the midpoint of BC and that is the midpoint of AD, that they share the same midpoint, then the diagonals bisect each other. So how do I do that? Well, I use the midpoint formula. The midpoint formula consists of find the average between the distances, x1 plus x2 divided by 2, and y1 plus y2 divided by 2. I'm going to start with the midpoint of BC. I can count clearly that the midpoint is between these two is 2. It's right in the middle. I can vertically count it, or I can use the actual points. Right? This is 0, 1 and this is 0, 3. So the midpoint of BC, if I add the x's, I get 0 plus 0 divided by 2. If I add the y's, I get 3 plus 1 divided by 2. If I simplify 0 plus 0 is 0, when I divide that by 2, the midpoint becomes 0, 3 plus 1 is 4 divided by 2 is 2, just like we said. So the midpoint of line BC is 0, 2. If I do the similar thing with AD, the midpoint of AD, now I'm going to find the average of negative 3, 1 and 3, 3. I want to find the midpoint between these two points now. So I add the x values. Negative 3 plus 1. Sorry, negative 3 plus 3, because I'm adding the x's divided by 2, and then 1 plus 3 divided by 2. As I simplify, notice how we still get a 0 here. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0 divided by 2, and 3 plus 1 is 4 divided by 2. 
the midpoint of AD is 0, 2 when I simplify. Notice how the midpoint for both diagonals is the same point. And this, this would definitely be another way to prove that this is a parallelogram because the diagonals bisect each other. Now, this, all of these properties, the opposite lines are parallel and congruent. We can talk about diagonals bisecting each other. And then as a result, we're going to talk about opposite angles are congruent. All of these properties of a parallelogram are true for a rectangle, a rhombus, and a square. Let's get to our next shape and talk about what makes them different. So as you can see, we're trying to question here, is this a rectangle? I already know, if I look at the lines, I know that this, this rise over run is going to be the same as this rise over run. Same thing here, right? The slope from here to here is the same from the slope from here to here. So I know that opposite sides are parallel, they're congruent, I can check that the diagonals bisect each other, I can check all those things, but that would just be proving that this is a parallelogram. What makes a rectangle different than a parallelogram? Or not different, but more a unique type of parallelogram. Well, a rectangle, two things must be true. It has four right angles, And the diagonals are congruent. So how do I prove that those two things are true for this parallelogram? Because if these two things are true, then for sure it will be a rectangle. So let's start with the right angles component. I need to first look at the slope. I need to look at the rise over run of what I have. Notice how this point here, I'm going to label my points. This is at negative 6, comma 3. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. These are in increments of 2s, so I have to account for that. Now, I can use the slope formula, or I can just count rise over run. Right? This is negative 3. Comma, it's negative 6, comma 3, and this one is 0, comma 6. The rise here is going to be 3 units, 1, 2, 3, and then over here I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the slope is 3 over 6, and since the line is going up, it's a positive slope. This slope simplifies down to 1 half. If I want to show that it's a right angle, I need to compare this line to this line. Does this line make 90 degrees? Do these two lines intersect at 90 degrees? So let's compare the slopes. Here I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is rise is 10 over 5. Now, notice how this line is pointing downward. So the slope has to be negative. And if I simplify 10 over 5, this turns into negative 2 over 1. The blue line was going upward. So the slope was positive. If I compare these slopes, I have 1 half compared to negative 2 over 1. Notice how these are negative reciprocals of each other. I'm flipping the slope and I'm making it a negative. And that implies that these are perpendicular. And since two lines are perpendicular, that means that they can only intersect at one particular angle, 90 degrees. If I can show the same thing for this line and this line, if I can look at those slopes, I would say I would be able to come up with the same thing. Notice that here I have 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The slope is increasing, so it's positive. That's 3 over 6, which is 1 half. I can do the same thing for the red line. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
since it's going downward, it's a negative 10 over 5, which is negative 2 over 1. Notice how negative 2 over 1 compared to our 1 half are still negative reciprocals of each other, which then implies that all of these angles are going to be 90 degrees. I can compare these slopes, this one to this one. Those are negative reciprocals, which implies 90 degrees. I can do the same thing for the other lines. One half over here for the blue one and negative 2 over 1. I can compare these slopes and notice how they're still negative reciprocals. So they're all negative reciprocals of each other. And this is how you can prove that all corners are 90 degrees based on the slopes being negative reciprocal. How would I prove that the diagonals are congruent? How do I show that, let's do a different color, that the length from here to here is equal to the length from here to here? Length. So length, I'm going to do this in a different color. Hopefully it's not too much here. Length is the same as distance. So I'm going to use the distance formula. x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. If I can find the distance between the points and I can prove that they're the same distance, then I know that this is a rectangle. So let's start with B and C. I'm going to find the distance of B and C. Let's do this on the left so I can make some space for both. The distance between B and C. I take the square root. I'm going to take the x values, right? I have 0. And this point down here is negative 1, comma, negative 7. So when I subtract the x's, I have 0 minus negative 1 squared. When I subtract the y's, I have 6 minus negative 7 squared. As I simplify, subtracting a negative makes it a positive. So this is just 1 squared plus 6 minus negative 7 is plus. That's 13. The distance of BC is the square root of 1 plus 169, which is equal to the square root of 170. In decimal form, or in radical form, the square root let me put this in my calculator. The square root of 170 is 13 it's approximately 13.04. I can do the same thing with the other distance from A to D. So if I do the same formula from the distance from A to D, I'm going to plug in the x values, right? Now I'm dealing with these two numbers. This is going to be 5, comma, negative 4. It's getting a little bit messy. That's OK. So if I subtract the x's, I'm going to have negative 6 minus 5 squared, subtract the y's, I get positive 3 minus negative 4 squared. Negative 6 minus 5 is negative 11 squared, plus 3 minus negative 4, that means it's going to add, that's going to be 7 squared. As I continue to simplify, I get negative 11 squared is 121. 7 squared is 49. As I add 121 plus 49, I also get 170. And as you can tell, the distance from A, not B. I meant to say D. So let's see all of these. will be also approximately 13.04. Since these two diagonals have the same length or the same distance, this is also a rectangle. What about this next shape? How can I prove that this is a rhombus? 
this is still a parallelogram because as you can see, opposite sides are parallel. They have the same rise over run, right? We have up one over two, up one over two, down one over two, down one over two. So opposite sides are parallel. I don't have to prove any of those things. What makes a rhombus unique? Well, a rhombus shares several properties. The first thing is that it has four congruent sides. I also know that the diagonals are perpendicular. What else do I know about a rhombus? Opposite angles are being bisected. I'm not going to be able to check that here in terms of angle measurements, but I can check these two things. How do I check that the four sides are congruent? Well, I can also I can do the distance formula between these two points. This is negative 3, positive 2. This is negative 1, positive 3. These points are negative 1, 1, and I have 1, 2. I can do the distance formula between A and B, find the distance. I can find the distance between these two. Are those two distances equal? And then I would go about finding the distance between these two and these two. And if those distances are the same, then we have four congruent sides. Since I just showed you how to find it with the distance formula for the rectangle, I'm not going to do that format. I'm going to look at the next one where the diagonals are perpendicular. So what does that mean? If I create a diagonal from A to D and B to C, I can see that they intersect at 90 degrees visually. But how do I prove that this intersects at 90 degrees? Well, let's look at the slope. The slope have to be negative reciprocal of each other. Whatever slopes I have, they have to be flipped, and one of them has to be negative. If I find two of those slopes, and they're negative reciprocals of each other, then I know they, they intersect at 90 degrees, making the diagonals perpendicular, which is unique to just this rhombus. So let's do it. Let's find the slope of A to D. From A to D, there's no rise, so it's 0. But the run is 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's 0 over 4. Now, I know that simplifies to just 0. But I, I want to show how it's negative reciprocal. The other line from B to C, the rise is 1, 2 over 0. Just like you can simplify any slope, you can really look at this slope as a constant, like just moving over 4, right? The di four, 0 divided by 4, it's still 0. 2 over 0, I'm going to make this one negative because it's going downward, right? We're going down here as opposed to the right. And I can compare that the slopes here are one of them is negative, and then notice how the 0 is flipped. This number here doesn't, doesn't really matter as over here because, as you know, 0 divided by 4 is still going to be 0. 0 divided by 2 is 0. 0 divided by anything is 0. And negative 2 or any number divided by 0 will be undefined. The key thing here is notice how the values are being flipped. And since the slopes are negative reciprocals, one of them is negative, one of them is positive, we meet, we have ourselves perpendicular lines. So AD is perpendicular to BC because the slopes are negative reciprocal. Awesome. Now, how do I prove that this shape here is a square? For our final parallelogram, a square has to have the properties of both a rectangle and a rhombus. So proving this one is going to take a while because I need to show multiple things. For a rectangle, I need to show the four right angles. And I can also show that the diagonals are congruent. For a rhombus, I would show that four sides are congruent and that the diagonals are perpendicular. 
Now, I can just pick one of each and show, well, if it's a rectangle, there I can, I can prove the four right angles very quickly. I can focus on just one property of a, rectang of a rectangle. I can prove this one real quick, and I can show that the diagonals are perpendicular by looking at the slope. So let's do that. Let's look at the four right angles. That implies that the slope, I need to look at the slope of this line and this line. The rise is 1, 2 over 1. So 2 over 1, and the slope over here is down 1 over 2. So negative 1 over 2. Notice how the slope is 2 over 1 versus negative 1 half. They are negative reciprocals. I can do it over here as well. I go down 1 over 2, negative 1 half, and then I go up 1, sorry, up 2 over 1. Notice how this slopes are negative reciprocal. These are negative reciprocals. And these are negative reciprocals. So that means that we have four right angles by just looking at the slopes. That's my explanation. For a rhombus, I want to look at how the diagonals are perpendicular. So how is this diagonal perpendicular to this one? Do they intersect at 90 degrees? To find out, I need to look at the slope. So let's look at the slope of AD. For AD, the slope is up 1, 1, 2, 3. Up 1 over 3. It's positive 1 third. The slope of BC, it's going to go 1, 2, 3 over 1. So negative 3 over 1. Notice how these slopes are negative reciprocal of each other, which implies that AD is perpendicular to BC. Since this shape has diagonals that are perpendicular and four right angles, sharing both the properties of a rectangle and a rhombus, this makes it uniquely a square. And since it's a square, then that means that it's also a parallelogram. In the end, the idea here is, do we know what makes this shape this square unique to just then saying it's a parallelogram. We want to be as specific as possible when we're leaving a shape, right? In the beginning, we would talk about triangles, like, oh, this is just a triangle. Well, what type of triangle? Is it equilateral? Is it isosceles? Is it scalene? Right? Same with parallelograms. What kind of parallelogram is it? Is it a rectangle or is it a square? Is it a rhombus? How specific can we get? And that comes down to knowing the properties of what makes that shape unique. All right, guys, I hope this has helped. Please let us know if you have any questions. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, we'll calculate.